Hi, it's that time for our November 2018 solar stats. So, yeah, stay tuned. Hi, John here. If this is your first time here and you're interested in solar PV, Tesla Powerwall, I've also got uh, a Tesla Model 3, a Hyundai Kona EV, so anything along those lines, um, hit the old subscribe button, hit the notification bell icon to be notified of new updates as and when I upload them. So in this video I'm going to go through our solar stats and Powerwall stats for November 2019. If you're new, just a little bit of background, and there are some changes since uh, our October uh, video, so those that uh, normally tune in uh, will be aware of some of the changes. Uh, we're based in the UK, we're in the East Midlands, and we have two arrays now. We have a 4 kilowatt array with a 3.8 SMA Sunny Boy inverter, and we also have, which was installed on the 31st of um, October so it's been up and running for the whole of November a new system uh, which is 2.2 or 2.23 um, kilowatt um, array with a 2.2 solar edge inverter and they are two separate systems so uh, we have a combined total now which I've included into my normal stats other things that we've got we've got a power wall Two, that's almost coming up for its 18th birthday. Uh, 18th? <laughs> Not 18th or for its first birthday. And um, that was installed in 2018. That's probably where I got the 18 from. December 2018, uh, the 4th. So it, today is the 1st. So I'll do a 12 month review of the Power Wall in a future video. If you're interested in seeing a bit more about the second solar array that we had fitted, uh, I will put a link up here yeah it is up there um for a video that i did on that uh, so without further ado let's crack on so our total solar generation for the month of november was 222 kilowatt hours i haven't shown on my chart the split between the new system and the old system however i, I do know that the new system produced 82 kilowatts of that 222 kilowatts so if you take that off the total would have been 140 kilowatts so not a brilliant month the november sun or lack of it um, as you'll see when we look at the day by day it was very very poor in terms of solar production which meant that the second array really came into its own because if we hadn't have had that, then I wouldn't have been reporting such a, a sort of healthy um, total. So our daily average was 7.4 out of that, uh, which was very good actually, in the time of year. Scrolling down to our self power, um, just so you're aware, the to, the power wall is set at cost saving, so self power is a secondary um, consideration, if you like, or priority. Uh, we are really working on pulling from the grid during our off peak, which is from 12:30 at night to 4:30 in the morning. So that four-hour segment is at five pence per kilowatt, and that's on the Octopus Go tariff. Details of that are down below, plus a referral link if you're interested in pursuing that so that's 50 pound to you and 50 pound to me if you're uk based so in terms of our overall self power you can see there that the power wall has really contributed the, the majority of that total so 47 percent of our total self power came from the power wall and only seven percent came from solar which brings us to a total of 54 percent self power so I don't expect um, to be high on self power now because we're on cost based um, time based control. So the priority is around saving money rather than doing self power. And to be honest with the amount of electricity we used in the month and the lack of um, solar, we would have been a lot more expensive if we would have been on self power because we wouldn't have coped basically we would have pulled even more from the grid at a more expensive rate 
this brings us neatly onto this chart, which is the percentage break between peak and off peak for our power wall self power. During the peak, which is red, the power wall managed to self power us for 71% of the time, which is similar to October, which was 73, and off peak uh, zero, which means we were pulling uh, probably every night on that off peak period from the grid. So that's that one. And that sort of bears true when you look at the Powerwall in and out figures, which is the next chart to have a look at. We've used the Powerwall a lot in November in terms of uh, power in and power out. And when I first looked at these figures, I thought, well, that can't be right because the percentage efficiency, the overall percentage efficiency is 101%, which uh, doesn't ring true. However, I'm sure that is the cutover on when I collect my figures from the end of the month to the beginning of the next month, there'll be a cutover of either a fully charged power wall um, or a fully discharged power wall. So it could be sort of 14 kilowatts or even 28 kilowatts difference. So the in and out there, yellow is in, green is out. Very healthy, very uh, using the power wall a lot, I guess is the takeaway from that. Uh, if we look at the day by day, as ever, I don't go through this in detail. Uh, day by day, it's just a bit of a, an overview, a bit of a summary. So it picks out the four key indicators that I'm interested in tracking. So how much the house has used, which is shown in blue. How much we've generated in solar, which is shown in yellow. What we've exported, shown in orange. And what we've imported, shown in red. And just looking at the yellow, it sort of bears the evidence of that 222 kilowatt hours for the month. There were only two days where we managed to get over 20 kilowatts in generation from our two systems. You know, so we've got six kilowatt inverter to be able to pull from. But uh, yeah, it was not great in terms of the sun. The worst day we had, when was that? It was around there. Yeah. So the 25th of November, very grey day, we managed 900 watts of solar generation from our two systems combined, which is not brilliant. But generally, if you look at the whole month, it was very poor in terms of solar generation. We have used quite a bit in terms of our house usage. I'll cover that in more detail um, on the grid usage chart, which is coming up next. You know, that's time of year, really, you, and the fact that we are on cost-based savings, so we are pulling a lot more from the grid to heat our hot water, to charge our two electric cars, and you run the kilns, and the electric kilns in the glass studio. So, yeah, all of those are contributing to our um, electricity usage. So let's nip neatly onto that one. So our average monthly house usage um was 37.8 uh, daily so it's quite high for november which means that we pulled on average from the grid about 33 kilowatts a day so again very um, very much increased consumption from the grid um, for the reasons i've just stated if we look at what we sent to the grid was quite low in November so what we exported is 15 kilowatts 15.6 kilowatts so whatever we generated we did use by and large our monthly pull from the grid is a thousand and seven kilowatts um, kilowatt hours so yeah quite a heavy month in terms of um, electricity usage which you know I'm cool with I haven't got a problem with that um, as you've seen earlier, the majority of that comes from the cheaper rate as well, so uh, which is all good news. Oh, I want to show the year on year as well because I think that's worth having a, a look at. Whoa, it's all gone over the place. Hold on a minute, let's get that in. So, for November, if we look on year on year um, with our 222 total. That is the best year that we've ever had, um, but that's really masked by the fact that we have an extra. 2.2 kilowatts in, in the array so if you take that out if you take that 80 um, 82 kilowatts out brings it to 140 you can see there that it is the fourth best 
month um, over those uh, those years so not brilliant at all uh, we have been sort of averaging about 180 on the four kilowatt array so uh, very poor overall um, I did actually clean the, the solar panels as well during November and during the day so I was hoping that would improve the efficiency somewhat um, but I noticed this morning as I tootled out to have a look that our new panels are sitting directly under the television aerial which the birds use as a perch deposit certain <laughs> properties <laughs> onto one of our panels so I'll have to keep an eye on that and make sure I keep that clean and um, thankfully because it's got a solar edge on it it'll only be that particular panel that will be running at a lower efficiency however um, it's not ideal so uh, I sh I'm sure I'll be up there on a fairly frequently basis um, to, to keep those clean so I might do a video on that next time I go up venture up onto the roof um, yeah so that's our solar stats so a, a mixed bag I guess um, in terms of what we managed to produce I was quite happy with the 222 kilowatt hours over the month considering the, the lack of sunshine we had and so pleased that we managed to get the second array in before the the winter kicks in in full so we'll see what december january and february um, bring so let's just have a look at that um year on year where is it year on year looking at december yeah december's typically 120 kilowatts um, our new array is 60 percent the size of our current array um, so I can sort of factor that in so we will certainly get more um, December does seem to be the worst month with a bit more in January February is very volatile <laughs> it can be brilliant or it can be very poor and then it starts kicking back in again so yeah the next uh, few months we'll be able to track that see how we're getting on Okay, any questions, um, just jot them down below. Uh, as ever, let me know how you got on on your production. Um, and uh, I mentioned before about the PV output. Um, the, I'll put a link again down, before, down below. So all of my data is sitting on there if anybody is particularly interested in pulling it from there and having a look at it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Solar stats done. I shall see you on the next one, uh, which will be December's, uh, which will be recorded in early January. So yeah, see you in a bit. <laughs> Take care. Bye.